guys! Welcome back to my channel. I'm Sonnet, the owner and creator behind Sonnet's Garden Blooms. And in today's video, we are going to be bringing back some farmhouse. I was definitely inspired by a photo I had seen out on Pinterest on a late night of scrolling through. I did not save it and you know what? I went back out and I could not find it again. So uh, for all you Pinterest lovers, definitely save your pins so you can go back and find them. I am definitely going to start doing that myself. Uh, but yes, bringing back the farmhouse. So I can't wait to hear what you guys all think. And if you haven't yet and you love my channel, go ahead, hit that subscribe button, turn on your bell notification. So every time I do release a video every Monday and Friday, you'll be notified. And then if you like today's video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. And I can't wait to hear what you guys all think. For project one, a couple weeks ago, I was at Goodwill and I found these three uh, containers and they were actually nestled inside each other and all three were $3.99. I got to the counter and the guy looked high and low for additional price tags. I'm like, all three are $3.99 and he finally ended up giving those to me for that price. One of the things that I've been trying to do is use up any of my transfers that I already have opened and used on previous projects. So in today's project, I am using some of my brocante transfer that I still have left over, and I'm pulling out three different fonts for the front of these three pieces. For the bottom crate, I did pull out White Swan. I wanted to pick three colors that really complemented each other. I thought starting the base with white would be perfect. So I did apply two even coats of White Swan to the bottom crate. And I also want to let you know all the products that I am showcasing in today's video, you can find on my website at www.sonnetsgardenblooms.com. For the second little box, I am painting this skeleton key. If you haven't worked with skeleton key yet, this one actually slightly changes color based on what colors surround it and the lighting. I absolutely love this. So sometimes it can have more of a gray tinge to it. Other times it can be a little bit more bluish, but it's absolutely beautiful. For the third and top crate, I am using faded burlap and I thought that would be perfect because we started off with white swan, which was a, a lighter color. Then we went to skeleton key, which is more of like a grayish bluish color. And then we're topping it off with more of like a taupey tannish color, which is the faded burlap. And this is another really soothing color. I absolutely love how all three complement each other. Now that all three are completely dry, I am now applying the transfers. In my past videos, I had always sealed the paint and then applied transfers. Recently, Debbie Beer did a video and she talked about how she has never sealed any of the DIY paint prior to putting on a transfer. I tried it and it worked great. So now I am just going in, um, just making sure all of my paints are completely dry before I apply the transfer and I have not had any issues. So if you haven't used transfers before, they are super easy. They come with a transfer stick, which I'm holding, and you peel off that back, you lay your transfer down, and each transfer, if you notice, they have the grid lines on there so you can really line every Thing up and once uh, what I do is I start on one end and I just start rubbing on one end and I work my way over if you pull up that backing and a piece of transfer has not come off lay it right back down and rub and it will come off and you will never know the difference the other key thing is once you have your transfer down, that backing that the transfer was on, I take that, I rub it all over my transfer, and it really embeds that transfer into your project, and that is called burnishing your transfer. 
the IOD transfers come in either four pages or eight pages. And I love that you can either use them on large projects like furniture flips or small projects like this uh, to really transform whatever you're upcycling. Lastly, you do want to seal your project. Anytime you're using a transfer, you do want to seal that. But because I'm using DIY paint, which can be reactivated with water, you do want to seal it with some type of top coat, whether that be big top like I'm using here, a poly, or any type of wax. Uh, DIY paint can be reactivated with water, which makes it awesome for blending. Uh, but yes, you definitely want to seal it. So that is a question I hear so often. So on all my videos, I always remind whoever is watching this what needs to be done. For project two, I am using Roycycle's decoupage paper called Sheep. And this one you can get two projects from. I love these sheep and I've been wanting to play around with it for a while. On one of my recent thrift hauls, you guys will remember I found that copper platter. I didn't know what I was going to do with it, but I thought it was pretty cool when I picked it. We're going to use that paper on here. My vision here is that I am going to basically line up the sheep right in the center, but I want to get enough of his ears and his nose in there, and I think it will work perfect. For the first step, I am applying two even coats of white swan to the platter. I do hear often, well, you don't have to have a white base, and that is absolutely correct. By having a white base to start off with, you are making your decoupage paper absolutely pop. So if I wanted it to be more subdued, yes, I could just leave it the copper color and it would be fine. But I really want that sheep to pop off this really amazing platter. What I did here was I took the platter, I laid it on top of the sheep, and I took a pencil and I drew a line all the way around with the pencil. Now I'm taking the scissors and I'm cutting it out and I'm just going to cut out just a little bit on outside the pencil line. I did erase the pencil line with an eraser and now it's time to decoupage guys. I pull the paper back and I like to do a starter strip and this really prevents a lot of wrinkles and makes it so much easier to decoupage. I use liquid patina from DIY and that is one of my favorite decoupage mediums when I'm using the recycled paper. I apply a nice even coat of the liquid patina to just the section that I'm working in. And I make sure that I have really good evenly coverage of that. And then I take the decoupage paper and I push it back and I smooth it out with my hand. Then I take the paintbrush that I have the liquid patina on and I just smooth out any of the wrinkles and really there are none. I mean, because I'm working in sections, this is really going to alleviate a lot of your wrinkles. After I smooth this all out, I am going to pick up the bottom portion of the decoupage paper, and then I'm just gonna work in sections all the way down. And as I'm working my way down, I am going to just take that paintbrush and I am going to smooth the paper out as I'm applying it, and just apply one even coat of liquid patina after I have the whole entire piece of paper down.
for project three, while I was up north thrifting, I did find these candlesticks. I loved how they were really chunky and candlesticks go over really well in my booth. Unfortunately, I did not like the color. So I am using this two times Rust-Oleum spray paint and I'm applying just two even coats of the spray paint to the entire piece letting it dry very thoroughly and then we're going to apply some DIY paint. For the candlesticks, I decided to use faded burlap. If you remember in project one, the top crate had faded burlap as the color of choice. Anytime I am doing flips, I always am thinking consciously of creating mini vignettes. I am putting all of these items in my booths, so I do want to think of color combinations, creating vignettes, and I don't want to randomly just pick colors so that is why I chose uh, faded burlap for these and I think it's going to be a great choice. I did apply two even coats to this candlestick or to both of the candlesticks. I'm going to let them dry very thoroughly and then we're going to come back and I am going to show you what I'm going to do next. I love wet distressing the DIY paint. You can definitely use like sandpaper as well, but by wet distressing, you are alleviating a lot of dust. Plus you have a little bit more control over your um, amount of distressing that you're putting on. And sometimes when you're using sandpaper, the black can actually be distressed as well. So I wanted the black to show through. So I am just randomly taking my wet rag and just going over all of the raised areas. This has been a very popular look in my booths. So the candlesticks typically sell pretty quick. Now that they're completely dry after the wet distressing, I am sealing them with Big Top. Again, you guys can seal any way that you'd like. Wax would be another nice alternative here. If you wanted to add a bit of um, dark wax to it, it would really get into the crevices or even the white wax. So either one would give it a completely different look. Today I've just decided to seal it with the big top and we're going to let it dry and these babies will be done. For project four guys, this is going to be a super simple flip. I went into my stash of goodies and I had this crock in there. I love the design on it, but I'm not in love with the color. So we're going to break out the new DIY paint called Crockery. It is the one-step paint that Jamie Ray Vintage curated. And you guys, these are the three new colors. It was Crockery, Blue Hills and Americana. And in one of my past videos, I have used Americana and Crockery, and I used the Crockery color on an old bean pot. So I thought, you know what? This is going to be a perfect flip for this farmhouse theme, and I am painting this crockery. Now, the one tip that I can provide you guys is definitely make sure that both of your coats are completely dry. So I am going to put coat one down, and you want your first coat of paint to be completely dry before you apply your second and if you want to apply a third you definitely want each coat of paint completely dry otherwise it can pull it up if it's completely dry you are not going to have any problems and really there are no other steps beyond this point unless you want to add a wax to it but at this point i love it as is Thank you. 
for our fifth and final project, I actually thrifted this quite some time ago and it was sitting in my stash. I was trying to figure out what I wanted to do with it, whether I wanted to put more florals in it or pull this out. I decided to pull it out and you can see that it created um, it ripped off some of the paint. So I took white swan and I did paint the very bottom of the crate and it blended perfectly. I then decided to add some ball jars to the crate and the bigger jars were just too big and I think these small jars just fit perfect. So I'm taking skeleton key and again I'm pulling out the skeleton key from project one and I'm going to apply two even coats of Skeleton Key to these little ball jars, let them dry in between coats, and then we're gonna wet distress them. What I'm doing here is taking a damp rag and I am just rubbing over any of the raised areas of the jar. And once I do that, I am going to then let these dry very thoroughly and then we're going to seal them. I'm breaking out the big top again and I'm applying just one even coat to the entire piece. Again, let them dry very thoroughly and then your ball jars will be finished. You guys know how much I love color, uh, but I did love this week's video because it was all natural colors. It was so soothing. Uh, I really had a lot of fun playing around with more muted tones and uh, I hope you guys enjoyed it and got some great inspiration uh, to try this in, you know, one of your own projects. So um, I love the color palette for this week and I also have another fun palette of colors for Monday's video as well. So as you guys are watching this, I'm already up north. Um, so I'm wrapping this up right before I leave. Um, just call me last minute L Lucy or Lizzie or whatever. I, <laughs> I'm just trying to wrap everything up so you guys have a video for Friday and Monday. Um, but yes, I am gonna be in the north woods of Wisconsin, just enjoying being up there. Unfortunately, no internet, um, gulp. Uh, I don't know what I'm gonna do with myself. I'm always feeling like I'm scrolling. So actually, I'm just gonna relax and just enjoy the time with my family and friends. And I hope you guys have yourselves a happy and safe fourth as well. And we will see you guys in Monday's video. Bye.